you're dealing with an ever-changing space due to the weather and the elements. And so I love to get to capture that moment and kind of keep it for myself and for the architect. Hello, Architect Nation, and welcome back. My name is Enix Sears, and you know that this is the show where we discuss tips, strategies, and secrets for running a more profitable and impactful architectural practice. What if getting BIM content online was free and you didn't have to give up your personal data in exchange for it? Well, that's what RCAT believes. RCAT offers data-rich objects, families, and systems for free and without registration. To sweeten the deal, you can download these files in the last four editions of Revit in SketchUp format or DWG. Go to rcat.com today and enjoy the freedom. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com. Today's guest, I'm excited to bring this guest on today. You've heard him because he sponsored the podcast, but above and beyond that, he is one of the world's leading architectural photographers. And I'm excited to have this conversation about the image of architecture, how we can convey and how you can convey your best foot forward through architectural photography. We're going to talk about his background, how he got into architectural photography, and really why an architect might want to get there, why you might want to have your work photographed, and how the photograph can tell a story about your work. So my guest today is Tobin Davies. Tobin, welcome to Business of Architecture. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me, Enoch. Ah, great to have you here. Uh, first of all, I got to say, I'm I'm looking at your website here. I'm just this is some serious eye candy. I mean, you just make these projects pop. What I'm curious about, Tobin, is I, you, there's a real great all these um, photographs that I'm looking at. Great use of 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 framing. Great use of lighting. Great use of massing. How much do you find that the architects are giving you sort of creative direction, or is it a collaboration like? What is that like for you? Oh, uh, well, first of all, thank you for the the kind words. I I feel so fortunate to get to capture beautiful projects all the time and that sure helps a photographer out. Um, but in terms of creative collaboration with architects, you know, it, it varies. Sometimes uh, they have a very specific shot list and a lot of creative direction and other times I just get turned loose in a space and get to uh, make the most of uh, the experience I have and the and the beauty of the project and try to showcase it with with the still image. Amazing. Now I know one of the challenges that architects have, and I know because I've had this myself for architectural photographers, is not you just feeling like the photographer doesn't really get the get the get the ethos of the project, doesn't get the the spirit of the space, doesn't understand, it doesn't really know how to make the the best aspects of the project pop out. And so I know that there's a lot of architects who would like to have more images shot of their projects, but they've been disappointed or let down by their local architectural photographers. What, what, what advice would you give from a photographer's perspective about how to maybe guide their photographers in a better way or how to really get the images that are going to make really speak the best about their projects? That's a great question. I think, you know, reviewing multiple photographers' uh, portfolios can give you an idea of, hey, if I'm looking through their portfolio and these are the type of images I would love to see in my portfolio on my website as an architect, I think that goes a long way because it's hard to, it's hard to take somebody and try to adjust their style to fit your vision um, because you know, a lot of times they're just going to kind of lean on their experience and their, their eye. And a lot of photographers are getting hired for that particular look. Um, so finding the right photographer with the right look probably goes a long way uh, for being pleased with the final, the final outcome. And how would you describe your process? What allows you to take, because I'm just looking at these photos here, these are incredible. Like the ones I'm sure, you know, you take a lot of them that maybe turn out okay. And we always use the best ones, but the ones on here are just incredible. The the way the placement when people are in the photo, uh, when you have the landscape there, the lighting. What do you think it is that allows you to like? What makes a good photograph from your perspective? What how do you how do you create this art? Yeah, you know the lived um, the well the the created environment, the designed environment, is so powerful as we all know you've walked into a space and felt something before you've walked in and seen the light through an opening um or do you have you know, a design education tobin i don't wow amazing what did you study in school i studied international business and uh 
was always interested in design, was always interested in art and creative pursuits and wanted to pursue some sort of marketing, like creative field. And then in that effort of, you know, that journey of discovery, I found architectural photography and I was like, wow, this is the intersection of so many things I love. Um, beautiful built environments and uh, one of the things I have in common with architects is architects are always shaping light, how it enters a space, how it is filtered through a screen perhaps, or how it makes its way through a window, or maybe there's an oculus that it's coming down over a pool. And the result is something visual that as an arch or as a photographer, I really appreciate because I'm constantly trying to sh shape and, and craft images that use light as well. Um, now the 3D space that they create as a result is something I'm often in awe of because I'm a you know a two-dimensional artist and I walk into these three-dimensional spaces and just get to feel the result of those months or years uh, that went into creating the materials palette and the you know the massing and how the volumes come together and all of that and then frequently in my work I get to spend all day with the the project architect and that's so humbling for me because I get to hear from them what all went into the journey and, you know, over a few hours, you know, how often do you get to talk to someone for hours about the thing that they spend their life on? And so it's really a privilege for me to get to come alongside and kind of partner with architects for that final stretch of taking their completed project and then creating images and moments from it that they can use to populate their portfolio and their website. How did you get into photography in the first place? You know, I was always a fan of photography uh, for as long as I can remember because I, you know, if you're a kid and you open a magazine, I remember sitting in like waiting rooms and offices, uh, like the dentist office. My dad's a dentist, so I spent a lot of time waiting for him to finish work or whatever. And so I remember opening National Geographic or the, these these magazines I don't know what you would say the golden age of magazines were, but back in the 90s, there were there were a lot of awesome magazines to look through and see beautiful images from around the world. And I remember just being moved by that as a kid. And, um, you know, in the Internet age, got to see more and more photography uh, through different blogs and, and social media came around. And I was kind of a hobbyist, but because I liked photography so much, it took me a long time to get to the place where I actually gave myself permission to identify as a photographer because I felt like that was something other, you know, something someone else does. And uh, finally it got to that um, realization that no one's going to come along and dub me a photographer. I just have to take the identity and run with it at some point if it's what I want. So started digging deep and trying to, trying to learn as much as I could about what uh, creates an image that's compelling that showcases architecture and involves life, whether it's human or a pet or a plant or something that like makes it not just a collection of materials, but an image, a moment that is the the built environment as designed for, for people, you know? And how did you discover, how did you discover how to do architectural photography? Because let's face it, it's very different. It's very niche. It's very focused. The lighting setup is different. So different than outside photography, landscape photography, portrait photography, action photography did you have a mentor um, I, I want to really unpack the story here were you what were you doing professionally before you jumped into architectural photography walk me through that yeah I was in a sales and marketing role for um, a clean fuel company um, in Texas and it was like manufacturing fueling infrastructure for for alternative fuels and um, while that was was a cool endeavor, I always kind of had this itch to try to do something of my own. And, and I had, you know, in addition, that interest in design. And so um, one day, I was, believe it or not, I was on YouTube and I found a photographer who's well known named Mike Kelly. And I watched him, uh, this probably 15 minute video, as he showed his process for photographing a twilight image. Um, of a of the backyard or the back you know elevation of a home that was on the water and it was just really intriguing to me to watch him go through the motions of each step and he was back then um compositing like a lot of flash pops was 
a little more popular. Now I think many photographers go for a bit of a more natural light feel. But just watching how intricate it was, how technical it was, it was it was compelling to me. And I was like, I want to do something like that because that is challenging. It's difficult. And because it's difficult, I imagine there are relatively few people who can do it well. So I just started lots of overnight sessions of learning as much as I could from, from the internet, honestly. YouTube University is what I often call it. Mm. Uh, trying to learn as much as I could about what it takes to create a compelling image and how to shape and craft and texture light. And, you know, trying to f hunt down architectural photographers because like you mentioned, they are a bit of a um, specific niche, you know, group there's it's it's hard to track one down in person so a lot of my scouting and learning was was online finding these photographers and just pouring over their website looking at how they approach projects how they um, would compose certain elements of a design project it's certain you know facades and watching how they use light to showcase materials and um it, it was a long journey and still is. I mean, I continue to, to look into what makes um, my fellow photographers work compelling to me to this day. I love looking and seeing, seeing an amazing shot of a, a moment. And it is, it is a moment because, you know, the light's always changing. You, there's never the same moment at a, in a space. You've either got a little different cloud cover or you've got, different time of year, the sun's slightly different, you know, you're dealing with an ever changing space due to the to the weather and the elements. And so I love to get to capture that moment and kind of keep it for myself and for the architect. Beautiful. And how did you how did you get these impressive commissions? Because the kind of work you've been you have on your website and the things that you've been able to capture is, uh, you know, this is not just random uh, architectural photography here. I mean, you're you're taking architectural photography to the highest level. So I'm curious how you how have you built your book of business? Well, thank you. That that is kind of you to notice. I and I feel so fortunate to be. I'm based primarily in Austin, where there's a big architecture scene and a lot of really amazing architects that um, put a lot of work into uh, beautiful homes. And fortunately, they they have. Uh, an audience around them that have an appetite for good design in a lot of ways that I think is different from maybe a lot of other cities. Um, and with Austin being kind of the boom town it is, you've got people with with a budget that supports beautiful residential developments, also beautiful commercial developments. And the result for, for me is that I just have been blessed with the chance to photograph a lot of um, beautiful projects that I'm thankful exist. What was your very first architectural commission? Hmm. You know, I think, I think it was through a friend who was with an architect named, uh, Jackson Galloway, which they've since, um, I think merged with another firm, but it was, uh, I believe it was photographing their office. You know, it was a friend of a friend and they found out that that was, what I was doing and they were kind enough to bring me in and give me a shot. So mm, amazing. Uh, they had just designed their own new space and wanted, wanted photos of it. So you only do work in Austin, right? You don't travel elsewhere. If other architects would want you to come photograph their work, it's not really feasible. Is that? Well, great question. You know, I, I kind of go wherever I need, um, as long as it works on the calendar. So I, you know, go to the East coast, I go to the West coast, um, and then all around Texas. So kind of, if, if there's work to be photographed, I'm, I'm able to travel. Now, on this podcast, a lot of times we talk about what the business side of architecture, in other words, the challenges of running a business. For you, what's the, do you consider yourself a businessman or a freelancer? Kind of because there's that, you know, I know a lot of, a lot of architectural photographers, it's very, uh, it's very lightweight, it's very minimal. It's like, hey, I'm your guy, I'm going to take the photos, I'm going to invoice you, boom. You don't need a whole team of people doing post-processing, I don't think, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, great question. You know, it's been interesting with with business education to try to think about what's scalable about architectural photography and what's not. And 
Um, certainly I have no desire to try to scale something that's not scalable and then lead to a diminished product. Um, but it, it has been cool to, to start to use, um, the scaling levers that I have through the internet and through that, you know, I've, I've worked with some retouchers who are able to maintain the, the look that I have and the integrity of, of the shoot and start to scale in that way. Um, but at some point, I think I just realized and decided there's only so many shoots I can go on a year. And there's only so many, uh, so much attention that I can provide. And so it's going to, there's a, there's a ceiling on it. And so I just decided to pursue quality over quantity, um, ultimately knowing that I can't scale, I can't create clones of myself. Um, there are architectural photographers that have associates that work for them and they're able to scale in that way. It's not something I've looked into so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, that's a great conversation for our listeners as they're discussing, as they're thinking about their own architectural practice and the decision about whether to scale or not. Mm -hmm. um, certainly in architecture, it's easier to scale. Obviously, there's firms like Gensler that have 4,000 people in 40 offices around the world. Uh, however, like you mentioned, I imagine architectural photography is much more niche, but I would imagine at the same time, that there's plenty of architectural photography uh, work out there because, I mean, there's commercial magazines, but particularly for just for portfolios in the U.S., you could probably keep your calendar completely busy traveling around and taking photos just for architects in the United States. Right. Yeah, it's there's always work. And I try to approach things with a, an abundance mindset where there's there's plenty of work to go around. And so my my quest is just to find the most beautiful, amazing projects I can and get to spend time in beautiful places with compelling people and providing the value that I can through capturing uh, quality design and beautiful moments. Your work right now, how does it come to you generally? Does it, do, you do, do you do advertising? Um, do you find that, but where does the work actually come from? Is it referrals from other architects referring you to other architects? How did you find that you built this business? Good question. Uh, often it's, it's architects that know each other and then we'll say, who are you using? I really like the photos on your website. And then they'll end up in, getting in touch. And then sometimes it's another photographer who's like, you know what? I don't have that date available, but Tobin might. And so they'll send, uh, send the client my way. And, um, I am doing Google advertising and I just, you know, I'm really proud of my portfolio and my mindset is I just want it to be in front of people who are in pursuit of the right architectural photography partner. So if somebody's looking for that, I want to be in consideration because I, I think they'll be able to tell from my portfolio, the, the value I can offer and then decide for themselves, whether it's the direction they're looking to go or not. Tobin, from your from your opinion, and I'm sure, let's face it, you're a bit biased on this, but what's the importance of architectural photography for an architect's portfolio? What can you tell us about this? What have you seen? Is it just vanity, or have you heard of success stories from having the right kind of images for a practice? Like you said, I am a bit biased on this, um, and I love architectural photography, but I do see quite a few benefits to it. Um, the first is that in a digital age, as as clients are looking for architects, the presence and the impact that a website can make is increasingly important. And, you know, I, I think it just all adds to the impression that you're creating. I'm sure in addition to all the calls and the, the marketing efforts that you have, in addition to your website, there's just, I don't know, I can't think of, I can't think of anything more important you know, to have once you leave a project, then some imagery that shows it in its best light after you give the keys to the homeowner or to the commercial space owner. Sometimes you, you lose access for a long time. I'm sure architects know much better than I do. What would be a typical budget? Talk to us about that for architects listening. Maybe they've used architectural photographers in the past. Maybe they haven't. How do how do they how do they estimate a budget for a typical project? What are kind of the ranges? What does that look like? Right, um, you know the range that I've seen is probably anywhere from twenty to six or seven or eight thousand, depending on who you're working with. Um, one of the things that I learned about years ago was how to do group cost sharing licenses. So, if I get commissioned by an architect 
and they want to bring in the GC and some of the trades as well, um, I'm able to, you know, incrementally increase the total project size, but then divide it by the number of parties and distribute these images to multiple parties that all have use for it in their portfolios. A great way to uh, value engineer a photography budget, to borrow an architect's term. And uh, I've seen that to be very effective because uh, one of the results is actually that the photos of that project go further because they're on the trades website, they're on the GC's website. And so it produces additional benefit, in my opinion, for the architect. What do you, for you, what's been the most difficult part in this journey of yours as a business owner and architectural photographer? You know, I think it's very much a business thing, but just the idea that it's mostly just up to me is the, is the challenge. Um, I have to have the vision for the business to go a certain way. I have to pursue the projects. I have to take the action that leads to the result, which is um, a pipeline full of projects that I am excited to photograph. And so the challenge was mostly at the beginning, trying to build the momentum. And now I'm fortunate to be in a, in a place where I just get to enjoy beautiful space after beautiful space and try to show them off with my skill and my craft. And but yeah, I definitely have empathy for any business owners out there, architect or otherwise, who are trying to learn all the business back end admin components that, that make a an enterprise work. When I was applying for colleges, so I ended up going to Cornell University studying architecture there. Great program, great program. But it was interesting when I when I got to Cornell and started studying architecture, that was the first time I had no idea that architectural schools had different cultures, meaning that, you know, <clears throat> Auburn, very different program than Cornell. Berkeley, mm. very different program than Cornell. They have different focuses, their theoretical underpinnings are different. Um, you know, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, very different program. SciArc, very different. Like, each one has its own flavor. The GSD has its own flavor, right? Some are more technically focused. Uh, you know, some are more theoretical. There's just the wide, wide. Some are more practical, hands-on, like down in Auburn. And so I kind of wish before I would have applied for architectural architecture school that I would have known this because then I would have been able to match up my particular interests with the school that I was going to. Maybe I still would have gone to Cornell. I don't know. But it would have been interesting to know this about architectural schools. So the reason why I mention that is because I'm curious, is there something similar with architectural photographers? I can't imagine that they're all the same. What should an architect be looking at to be able to differentiate the photographers other than the photos? Because we know certainly architects are very visual. They can look at the photos and make a clear judgment based upon the photos. But what are the things you think they should keep in mind? turnaround, deliverability, ease of working with the person, equipment they're going to use. What are sort of the criteria above and beyond just the images themselves, would you say? You know, how many images, the licensing rights on the images, what, what should an architect know as they're hire, looking to hire an architectural photographer? Yeah, it varies a lot on the deliverables based on probably your photographer as well as the expectation of the client. Give me top three considerations that an architect would probably want to look into as they're choosing an architectural photographer other than price? I think reliability um, and just, you know, someone who picks up the phone, who answer, answers emails, who is able to uh, correspond back and forth and collaborate leading up to a project and then in the post-production process, whether there's additional edits required, that all requires organization on the photographer's part. And if they're a little haphazard, then that, you know, that timeline can sure get stretched out. Um, I think another important thing is probably just their portfolio being in line with what you want. Because when push comes to shove, a lot of times artists are leaning on what they know the most and what they've been hired for the most, which may be a certain look for that photographer. So I think being familiar with their portfolio and being in love with it probably is a great first step uh, for the architect who's looking to hire a photographer so that they're already over the moon about working with them and then they just trust them to create the results that they consistently create in their portfolio. The third thing probably would have to be personality. I imagine if you're spending all day with someone, um, potentially, if, if you're on site with a photographer, you want someone who's pleasant, who, <laughs> who isn't Have you ever had to turn down an architect who wasn't pleasant? You know, I try not to, to turn down for that reason, but yeah, there's, there's different moments that that aren't as favorable for 
for working together. <laughs> um, Have you ever gotten yelled at on a shoot? You know, fortunately not. No, I, I work with a lot of amazing people. Um, but there, there are particular visions and whenever someone's invested months or years in the design of a space and they know it way better than me, even with a walkthrough and a scout and a, you know, a shot list, then I kind of understand it from the standpoint that I'm, I'm new, you know, I, with all my experience, that's all on other sites. And so for when I show up uh, to a new site, I try to arrive with a certain level of humility and because my, my client brought me in to do what I do, but also they know the project better than I do. So I have to trust them with that. And what kind of prep work is needed? You mentioned a shot list, typically what, a, what should an architect have? Uh, that's going to happen before the shoot, before you show up? I think it depends on how specific you want the outcome to be. If you have a particular vision, then I would be sure to try to express that and have have a call and maybe just have a very specific shot list and then plan to be on site. If you have seen somebody's work, you've looked at their portfolio and you just love what you see, maybe it's worth bringing them in and pointing out your favorite features or, or the best images that they can with their intuition. Well, Tobin, how can people, how can look you up? Uh, we'll, we'll drop all the links in the show notes. What's the best way to people reach out and contact you? The easiest way is just through my website, which is tobindavies.com, T-O-B-I-N-D-A-V-I-E-S.com. And uh, either fill out the form there or email me. My email is info at tobindavies.com. And we could talk more about projects, even if, you know, you're not ready to photograph something. Maybe you're just wanting to get that shot list together. We can talk through what that could look like and what moments I think would photograph well from your project. Beautiful. And I believe we have a complimentary bonus that you're offering to BOA listeners if they use a special link. That's right. Yeah. If you go to uh, BOA photos or, or just email me and mention uh, Business of Architecture podcast, I'll, I'll be sure to apply that. All right. Great. Well, to all our listeners out there, we hope that whether you're an employee at a firm, whether you're a firm leader, that, that you do have the kind of products that you're proud to show in photographs because every project can be highlighted by photography and that you're setting aside the budget to be able to get your best work out there and get it up on the website so it really shows your firm in the best light. So happy that, you know, hopefully we're solving a problem for some of our listeners out here, which is I don't really have any architectural photographers that I know of or the ones around here, they're not that great or... I really like Tobin's work. So this is just an additional resource that we're happy to bring to you and happy to have Tobin here on the podcast. Tobin, thanks for bringing us here today. And um, before before I let you go, I do have one question that came to mind. It's simply this. I read a lot of books. Maybe you don't read books at all, but you're an international business major. Do you have a favorite business book for you? And you could say, nope, I don't. I hate reading business books. That's a fair answer too. You know, recently I've been reading, it's it's not specifically a business book, but I've been reading the Elon Musk uh, biography. Ooh, what'd you and like about that? I just, I love story. And I think that's one of the things that I enjoy about architecture and photography as well, is it, it kind of captivates you and takes you to another place and makes you feel things. And I just enjoyed reading his account I don't know a lot about Elon Musk. I'm not a big tech industry person, but I heard it was really good from a friend of mine. So I dove in and I'm listening to the audio. So I'll listen while I walk and stuff. And I'm very impressed with the opposition that he faced and then chose to still walk into. And, and that kind of echoes what I admire in people anyway, you know, which is their their grit to get through hard times, their stick to itiveness to make it through a tough project or a tough season. And uh, so I was just encouraged by that. And also his, like, there's no limits on his dreams, which, I mean, there are, but he doesn't seem to see it that way. He just dreams up crazy new stuff that no one's yeah, ever done. It's amazing. Uh, incredible. Great book recommendation. I want appreciate that. So to all our listeners, I really hope that you choose to invest in yourself the way that you ask your clients to invest in you, invest in yourself, invest in your work. Uh, you have a great resource here, TobinDavies.com or BOAphotos.com. Tobin, appreciate you being on the show. Thank you, Enoch. I sure enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. And that's a wrap. Oh, yeah. One more thing. If you haven't already, head on over to iTunes and leave a review. We'd love to read your name out here on the show. What if getting BIM content online was free and you didn't have to give up your personal data in exchange for it? Well, 
That's what RCAT believes. RCAT offers data-rich objects, families, and systems for free and without registration. To sweeten the deal, you can download these files in the last four editions of Revit in SketchUp format or DWG. Go to RCAT.com today and enjoy the freedom. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem. <laughs>